Hello everyone, I'm Professor Roth and today we're going to be going into how to open the ventral cavity. Remember ventral means belly side, so we're going to be opening right along the front cavity. We'll do the abdominal cavity first and then we're going to go into the thoracic cavity as well, all the way up. Okay, so the reason I like to use start with the abdominal cavity first is because it is a little bit easier. There's no bones or diaphragms or anything we have to worry about down here. And so we're just going to be following this right white line down the middle, okay, linea alba, and we're just going to make a little cut. So the most important thing is try not to cut your internal organs inside. These are very superficial muscles that we're cutting through, so you just want to kind of gather up the muscle, the abdominal muscles here, make a little bit of a cut, get some space in there, and then we're going to be cutting right, right along the middle of the abdomen. Okay, so again, try not to cut down in here. Once you get in here, in this region here, you're going to start to see some fat. Once you see the fat, that means you're getting really close to the diaphragm, so you want to go ahead and stop and go back to finish all the cut all the way down to the very, very bottom. That way you'll get a nice, good picture of your urinary bladder, which is that little structure right here. Okay? So we're going to cut up. So now becomes the most difficult part. Once we get into the bottom of the rib cage, there's going to be a, the diaphragm, which is a little um, sort of a sheet of skeletal muscle going right upon them, right, kind of separating the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity. We want to keep that diaphragm as much as possible. So what we need to do is separate that diaphragm from the body wall. Okay, so go slowly in this area here. Try to find the little diaphragm. If you make a little bit of a cut into the diaphragm, that's not a big deal, but try not to completely hack it to pieces. Okay, so if I, so now I've gone through, okay, so here is the edge of the diaphragm, and what I want to do now is separate the diaphragm from the body wall. Okay, so if I stick my finger in here, you can see there is the boundary of the diaphragm. And here's a little bit of a fat pad that we can clean out. Okay, you can use your forceps to pick that out, or you can just use your fingers like I did. Okay, but what we're trying to do is to keep as much of the diaphragm intact as possible. We're trying not to destroy the diaphragm, and so you want to cut along the boundary, the edge of the diaphragm, as close to the body wall as you possibly can, all the way around. So remember, it's like a bell shape, right? So you want to kind of make it circular as you cut through. Any fat you find, go ahead and peel that off. And so you're going to do the same thing on both sides. So I'm going to clear out some of this fat here so I can see. We're going to do it on the other side. So we can already see part of the diaphragm. So this right here would be the liver. Okay, This little skeletal muscle bell-shaped structure on top of that, that is the diaphragm. Okay, So I am going to cut it down, what am I say this way? cut it down a little bit further, but there's some juices in here that I need to get out of. Okay cut it down a little bit further so we can see it, and then we need to go on to the other side as well. Okay, so we need to find the boundary. There we go. Okay, so there's still some fat. Pull that out. So there, if I stick here, you can kind of feel the edge of the diaphragm. You want to keep that as much as you can. It won't be perfect. Nobody's expecting perfect, especially since you're all doing it by yourself. Okay, but we're going to try to cut as close to the edge of the wall as possible so that we can get a nice bell-shaped structure. Okay, give me some fat. I'm going to pull all that fat out. And now we have the beginnings of our diaphragm. 
down in there. Try to go as far back as you can. Okay, so that you have a little diaphragm sitting on top of your liver. Okay, so liver, diaphragm. And that would be where the base of the heart attaches, right there, where all that nice fat is. Okay, so now what we need to do is we, we're gonna continue up, but, we, but at, at this point, what I like to do is I like to separate the abdominal cavity, the wall of the abdominal cavity from the wall of the thoracic cavity because so we can flap the whole thing back. And so there's two ways to do this. You can just cut straight down and cut through ribs or whatever you want, you know, anything that's in there. Or if you would like, you can find the boundaries of the ribs. Okay, so you can see the intercostal muscles here. So you kind of can cut along the boundary of the rib cage if you would like. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so just continue down, continue down. And this is just cutting through muscle, so you shouldn't have a too much resistance. And that'll flap that whole thing down like that. Ooh, mine's a female, I can see already. Okay, so looking inside, so now we have the edge of the thoracic cavity and the edge of the abdominal pelvic cavity, and they're nice and separate from each other. I'm gonna go do the same thing on the other side. our abdominal pelvic cavity, nice and exposed, easy to look at. Now what we need to do is cut in and open up that whole thoracic cavity. And that is trickier because there's a rib cage there and especially the sternum in the front. We need to try to avoid the sternum. Now if you happen to have the thick scissors, that would be a better bet. And especially if you're willing to get thick scissors, um, those are better because it is possible to break your little scissors, but since I think the dissection kits don't have the little scissors, I'm going to go ahead and stick to the little scissors so that I can be in the same boat as you. But if you do have bigger scissors, now's a good time to get those out. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. See this right here? That's the midline right there. Under the midline is a bone, so that would be the sternum. We need to avoid the sternum because if we do not avoid the sternum, it will be too hard to cut through. Okay, so what I did was I went off a little bit to one side, and now I'm gonna go straight up. One mistake that I see is sometimes students go off to one side and they just keep going off to one side and you end up way too far over here. So you wanna go off a little bit to an angle and then go straight up, okay? And you can do either side. Either side is just as good. Okay, so one thing is try not to cut any of those internal organs down in there. Get those lungs out of the way. It does make it a little bit trickier to cut through this with these small scissors, but it looks like it's gonna work just fine. Okay, so you might wanna kinda cut through the muscle first, all the way up and kind of spread it and then cut through the ribs too. Okay, so yes, you will be cutting through the ribs so that you're actually in the cavity. Don't, not just the muscles, the ribs too. Okay, so now comes the tricky part. Okay, so at this point we need to crack the ribs backwards in order to peel them back off of it. Okay, so there is gonna be some connective tissue really sticking on. Ooh. Sticking onto the top of the heart here. Okay, you can start to see the trachea. So we want to kind of break through that, separate and peel all that back. You should start to see some blue and red at this point. The blue is going to be veins and the red is going to be arteries. Okay, oh I wish my tray was bigger. Work with what we got. 
By the way, we're done with muscles. Any muscles that are in your way, you can go ahead and snip. Okay, so we're good. So this is the sternohyoid. We can snip that and pull that all the way back. You want to continue separating and separating until you get in, all the way up to where the larynx would be, which is up here. Okay, so again, crack. Sorry, I know this is a bit traumatic. You gotta crack it back, and that way you'll be able to have access to your thoracic cavity. Okay, now it's just a matter of cleaning this up and identifying the structure. 